All right, hey, what's going on? I'm Ethan Michael. What's up? I'm your, your guy, Oscar Rodriguez. And I'm Azura Rees. We're here to get the ball rolling to provide you with your weekly sports updates. Welcome back to Titan Sports. All right, to get things started today, things got a little heated Wednesday night after Mike Tyson reportedly punched a man who was on the same flight as San Francisco to Florida. Based on the video footage published by TMZ, the footage shows blood on the side of the man's head after the incident with 55-year-old Tyson. According to another passenger, everything was cool, but between the man and Tyson when they boarded the flight. That's right, Ethan. Apparently, Tyson even took a selfie with the guy's friend and was said to be patient even after the man kept trying and trying to talk to him. But eventually, Tyson had enough and reportedly turned around to tell the guy to chill. And of course, we all know that did not happen and Punch and started flying after that. According to TMZ Sports, sources close to Tyson say the pestering man was, quote, extremely intoxicated and would not, wouldn't, wouldn't stop provoking the boxer in his seat, end quote. A spokesman representing Tyson told USA Today Sports, quote, unfortunately, Mr. Tyson had an incident on a flight with an aggressive passenger who began harassing him and threw a water bottle at him while he was in his seat, end quote. The man took several blows to the head and you can see his bloody forehead on the footage as well. Tyson removed himself completely and walked off the plane seconds later. The man received medical attention and was treated for non-life-threatening injuries. According to TMZ Sports, the San Francisco Police Department did a response to the incident and arrested two people who were involved. On to baseball, Shohei Tani dominated on the mound once again against the Houston Astros Wednesday night and threw a perfect game through five innings before giving up one hit and one walk in the sixth. This was not the only success Otani had on this plate, though, because before he can even make an appearance on the mound, he already made history by becoming the first starting pitcher to bat twice before throwing a pinch since 1900. Otani continues to really show off just how great of a pitcher he really is and overall ball player. He is on the top of the top of the six scoreless innings with 12 strikeouts, and according to MLB.com, the Japanese star matches his career high with his second start in the majors, which was back in April of 2018 against the Oakland A's. According to ESPN, the MLB and the MLBPA has yet again extended Trevor Bauer's administration leave from the Dodgers through April 29th. Bauer has not taken the mound since June 29th of 2021, since his three-year, $120 million contract in early 2021, and was only paid $28 million salary for the year. Bauer posted a seven-minute video to his own YouTube channel completely denying the domestic violence and sexual assault allegations that were made against him back in July last year. In regards to Bauer's thoughts on the extension, he, he had this to say, quote, nothing new, one job to do, and they can't make it up, th and they can't, make, can, they can't make up their mind. I feel like a mask mandate, end quote. Many fans have spoken out in regards to this whole situation, and it's safe to say this is a whole lot of mixed opinions and emotions on the Bauer. Some are for extension, some want him re reinstated as soon as possible. Bauer has missed a total of 105 games since his initial leave date of July in 2021. The Dodgers have not publicly stated whether or not they are going to reinstate Bauer after a suspension. However, according to Yahoo Sports, there are baseball insiders who do not believe Bauer will return to the Dodgers. All right, guys, there's a lot of drama in the sports world right now. Let's stay on this Bauer situation, though. What are your guys' thoughts, Oscar? Um, you know what? There's no question, without a doubt, like that Bauer deserves his punishment. But they just may, need to make sure to have like set what's it called like a set of. Oh, <laughs> all right, I don't know what I was gonna say. Just make sure they have to have like a a time for them, a date. They don't have to keep switching it. Yeah, me personally, I feel like with the way everything went on in court and the way how he was basically proved, not only proven innocent, but it didn't really further go on. I think he should. I think he should be reinstated, and that may be just me being a Dodger fan, but I think he should be reinstated. However, I do believe also that it's also his fault for even putting himself in that situation, being one of the top pitchers in baseball and being one of the highest paid pitchers as well. Like especially being in LA, you got all the lights and cameras on you, and this is proof of it right here. I think it puts the Dodgers in a tough position, right? Because that, 30, that $28 million a year for the contract, if he's not playing, that's just wasted salary. Mm -hmm. right? I don't, I, you know, it's, it's hard to know, but the situation is, I think it's still, um, you know, it's still going forward and stuff, but um, it puts the Dodgers in a tough position. So I, I don't know if there should be, 
like a, an understanding from the league, but if he can't play, then the salary should not go against us. Um, that's how I feel. All right, don't go anywhere, Titans. When we return, Brian and Beverly will be discussing everything CSUF sports related on Titan Timeline, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Titan Timeline. Let's get started. The Titans showed out last weekend at the Mount Sac Relays as the men's 4 by 400 relay team won their section of the 1600 meter relay elite, running a three minute and seven seconds, which would place them sixth overall. They came second in the four by 100, improving their Big West Conference leading time with a 40-15. Moving on to some baseball, our Titans took on the USC Trojans Wednesday and were able to secure the win for a walk off on a wild pitch. Early in the game, the Titans gave up a total of three runs after the first two innings. However, our very own Brendan Bobo was able to get us on the board with a two-run single in the fourth inning. Fast forward to the ninth inning with bases loaded as a wild pitch in the dirt. The Titans took home the W with a final score of 5-4. to four. Pitcher Michael Weisberg helped earn this win for us by pitching a shutout ninth inning, not allowing a hit, and striking out two hitters. We will be rooting for our Titans this weekend as they take on CSU when here at home for a three-game series that begins today at 7 p.m. The women's softball team also took home a win for us on Tuesday, defeating the LMU Lions 4-2 on their turf at Smithfield. Daisy Munoz got the ladies on the board in the first inning, hitting her fifth home run of the season. Kika Ramirez followed right in Daisy's footsteps and hit the second home run of the game during the second inning. Although the Lions were able to tie the game, the Titans broke the tie in the fifth inning by adding two more runs with a base hit and a stolen base by Megan Delgadillo. Hannah Becerra brought her in with a base hit and eventually brought the score up to 4-2 to two after Deshae Hill hit the sack fly to right field. The ladies will face off against UC Santa Barbara for a three-game series that begins today and a doubleheader on Saturday. It has not been an easy week for the women's tennis team as they have faced some of their toughest opponents this past week. The ladies lost against the number 46 Arizona Wildcats on Wednesday, the number 70 Cal Poly Mustangs on Saturday, and the number 25 UC Santa Barbara on Sunday. Now, although they've had a tough week, we are certain our ladies will push onward and forward and get the W in their one match against the UC Irvine Anteaters next weekend. This will wrap up their regular season as well. First serve begins at 11. A.M. Well, that's all the CSUF news I have for you guys today. When we return, join us for our roundtable discussion. Things could be stranger, but I don't know how. I'm going through changes now. Could spend a lifetime trying to figure it out. I'm going through changes now. That have just begun Under a purple sun There's many reasons We are what we've become I'm going through changes now Things could be different But I don't know how I'm going through changes all of the strangeness I'm going through changes now All right guys let's talk a little bit about some hot topics in sports so let's go on with the basketball Zay 
What do you got for us? So my original pick from the playoffs from a couple weeks ago was the Warriors, and so far they're proving me right. You have Jordan Poole, I believe is the X Factor. He's starting off in the season, regular season, ending off with 18 and a half points. He's now averaging 29 and a half, and his PER went up to 28.71. And just last night with the game three against Denver, you had Poole with 27, Curry with 27, and Klay Thompson with 26 points. They're up 3-0, and I honestly I think the key takeaway is they're going to sweep Denver, and I also will go on a limb and say they're going to sweep either Memphis or they'll sweep Minnesota and go advance to the Western Conference Finals. For sure, for sure. Um, some boxing news. Um, can we talk a little bit about that? Yes. So, um, so I think boxing's in a tough position right now because, um, I mean, they've done that to themselves because it seems like every fighter right now has a belt and is the champ, and their promotion, you know, the, the company promoting them gives them a belt. And uh, I think that's hard for the average fan to keep up with because you look at a, a, a league, up and coming league like UFC, where it's just one belt. And the UFC gets to decide who the fighters fight. It's, there's so much politics in boxing, the sport deserves better. Right, for sure, for sure. Last, let's go on with you, Oscar, a little bit about football. Um, let's talk a little bit about, about Debo. Yeah, so Debo <laughs> Samuel, kind of like shocking news. He wanted to be away from San Francisco. And some of the picks I think that he's going to go is either the Ravens or the Panthers, you know, the Panthers just because he's from South Carolina, so why not go home, have a little homecoming, play in front of your friends and family. But also with the Ravens, who doesn't want to be paired up with Lamar Jackson, you know? Yeah, and then you, go, you have another wide receiver, but it's Marquise Brown. He has, been, he has been very inconsistent throughout the season. He's been in the league, so I feel like him being with the Ravens makes him a little bit more top tier, and they can obviously win the, their division. All right, Titans, that is all the time that we have for today. But don't worry, because we will be back next week with a brand new episode. As always, I'm Brianna Beverly. And I'm Ethan Michael. Like I said before, go on, go on Instagram and follow us if you liked our show at CSUF Titan Sports. I'm Isaiah Ruiz. And in case you're wondering where you could also follow us on Twitter, go ahead and give us a follow there, too, at CSUF Titan Sports. And I'm Oscar Rodriguez. Once again, thank you for all tuning in. And from all of us here in the studio, have an awesome Friday, Titans. <laughs>